Is the Scarlet and Violet DLC worth it? That's the big question at the moment. So the brand new DLC for Scarlet and Violet, the Teal Mask, just dropped the other day. I've had some time to play it, and overall, I think it's pretty good. Also, quickly guys, once I hit 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away a $20 eShop gift card that you can use on your Nintendo Switch. So all you have to do to enter is subscribe, comment down below, letting me know that you did that, and like the video. So the reason we got this DLC was because there's not going to be a brand new Pokemon game this year. I personally enjoyed Scarlet and Violet a lot, even though it was a pretty buggy game. Like overall, I really enjoyed the experience and I liked the open world style. It was really unique and I really felt like I was immersed in the world myself. And the new DLC is $35, but you get it in two parts. So it's like $17 and like 50 cents per part if you want to split it into two, which is not too bad if you really think about it. I think if it was just a one part DLC, 35 would be way too much money. I mean, it would be nice if it was just $30 because I think the Sword and Shield DLC was 30 bucks, but you know, five more dollars, it's not, not gonna break the bank. It's, it's nothing too much. Anything more than 35 though, I would say is a bit iffy. Like if it was 40 bucks, I don't think it would be worth it. I think 35 is the most expensive it should be. So the first part came out a few days ago and the second part will come out in winter 2023. So you get two bonus storylines to play. And I personally really enjoy that fact because you can come back to the game two different times like Scarlet and Violet have almost been out for a year now which is actually crazy I feel like it's been out for like six months I don't know how it's been so long already but I haven't really played the game much at all in the past you know six ish months after I beat the main storyline because I just felt like there wasn't anything more for me to do of course there are a lot of things you could do like raids and everything and shiny hunt which I hop on every now and then, but I don't really play for that long, really. But with this new DLC, it kind of revitalizes the game, it refreshes it, and I'm really excited to be playing this game and getting more hours put in. I really do feel like this is a really refreshing DLC, though. I I'm enjoying it so far. I haven't entirely beat it yet. I think the island of Kitakami is really cool. It's really, it's honestly a pretty island. I'm really digging the aesthetic. I like all the farms that they have and it feels really diverse because the map is smaller of course but that's not a bad thing because everywhere you go is not like everything else you know what i'm saying like everywhere you go is brand new basically and refreshing of course at some point it's gonna get a little boring when i've ran around the island 500 times but i probably won't do that i don't i don't know because it's not a big dlc you get about six hours of content I like the colors a lot. I, I think the colors pop on this DLC in the new island. I think it's really neat. And I also don't know if there was a graphics update, but it kind of seems like there might have been. Of course, there are still some bugs. There's still some little glitches, but it seems a little bit better than it used to be. And now I do find that my frame rate and the bugs and glitches happens way less when I play in handheld mode. When I have my Switch docked onto the TV, that's when I get the most bugs and glitches, like sometimes black bars pop up on the screen. It's not my dock. It happens only on this game. It doesn't happen on any other games that I play when my Switch is docked. It's just this game, which is kind of annoying, so, so it's kind of laggy, and I don't really enjoy playing it on my TV, but in handheld mode, it looks great. The colors look better. The frame rate seems a little better. The only bug I am having, though, when I'm riding Maradon, though, I do find, like, sometimes it just, the game freezes, and then it resumes after like two seconds it's kind of annoying but it's whatever maybe they'll do a little patch for that it's probably just a small bug it's not that big of a deal i think it's also important to remember that this is not an entire brand new game this is a dlc which is just bonus content so the dlc is not gonna take a very long time to finish compared to a regular pokemon game storyline i do feel like the beginning of the dlc had a little too much dialogue for me personally because i just really wanted to explore the new island i don't know if that was just me being anxious or if anyone else agrees with that it wasn't too bad because luckily there are a lot of parts where you can go off and explore which i did so there aren't a ton of brand new pokemon that are introduced but i honestly think that's fine and i like the new pokemon that they introduced overall they're all pretty cool looking there are a few that are kind of that i'm like iffy about but but overall i i enjoy the new pokemon there I know that it's getting harder for the Pokemon Company, Nintendo, Game Freak, whoever designs the new Pokemon, I know it's harder for them to design them because 
because there are like roughly like a thousand Pokemon or something like that. So coming up with a brand new original design that's never been seen before is really difficult. So I'd rather have them release just a few great Pokemon rather than, you know, 30 brand new Pokemon with subpar designs. I think overall the new Pokemon look great. Monkey Dory does look a little strange. I don't know. It's kind of a cool strange in a way. I am, I'm not really sure how I feel about his design, to be honest. I, I don't really care about him. So it's like, I'm not really upset about it, but just a little bit strange. Also, Ogre Pond, I know everyone's saying this. He has a great design. He's a very cute Pokemon, and I think that's the best one that we have received. The best new Pokemon in this DLC. I think the design is great. I like him a lot. Can't really complain about him at all, actually. So while the storyline, in my opinion, isn't as good as the normal Scarlet and Violet storyline, I definitely think it's still pretty solid. Like, I still feel like I'm intrigued and I'm enjoying it. And I do think it's going to set up well for the second part of the DLC. And so, like I said earlier, the gameplay takes roughly six-ish hours to finish, depending on, I guess, how long it takes you. Like, it could probably, you could probably expand that out to, like, seven hours, maybe eight hours, possibly, even. But, in my opinion, I think it's best to try to space it out as much as you can, because six hours can go by really fast. So, basically, like, what I've been doing is I've been doing some of the main storyline, and then I've been going off to explore the island, catch new Pokemon do some raids or whatever, try to shiny hunt for a few minutes. I'm not like a shiny hunter in a, necessarily, but I do, I, it's kind of fun to search for a shiny. I, I found like four, three or four shinies so far in the game. But overall, I do feel like it's really easy to follow the storyline. The new characters are really cool and diverse in my opinion, and they're great. Uh, it's an interesting storyline. I, I think it's going to keep you intrigued. It keeps me intrigued. Like, I'm actually reading the dialogue. You know, I'm not just spamming A or B or whatever to skip it all. I'm actually reading it. And I think the concept of being involved with other schools is actually really cool because it makes the entire world of Pokemon seem more real. And, like, it's a really big world that with, like, all this diversity and stuff. And, um, like, the lady at the beginning, I can't remember her name. I don't feel like looking it up. Leave a comment down below if you know her name. But... Um, I, I believe she's from what the blueberry Academy or something um, From Unova from the Unova region, which I thought was really cool because you know gen 5 Unova region I don't know if that's hinting at whatever the next Pokemon game will be will be based on the Unova region I know that there have been some theories and leaks about that and I'm pretty sure Riddler Q Leaked that one of the main characters would have something to do with the Unova region So I guess that would be a confirmed leak which is kind of cool um, I don't know if she'll take us back there to the Unova region. Who, who knows what's going to happen, but I just thought that was really cool. Um, and I also enjoy that the wild Pokemon are all really high level. Like, everything I've ran into so far is level 50 or higher. I know it's not really a big deal. I'm not really going to change up my team at this point. I, I like my team, but it's just nice because if I ran into a wild Pokemon, because if I run into a wild Pokemon, you know, I'm actually going to get more XP than I would just, you know, battling like a level 10 Pokemon or whatever. And in the rare case that I do find a really cool Pokemon that I want on my team, uh, it'll already be a high level. I think the land overall is really pretty and it's probably one of the best parts about the DLC. Like the festival is pretty cool. I feel like it's as vibrant and the, the map feels more alive because it's smaller. So everything's kind of condensed in a little bit, but not to hate on the big map, of course, you know, the regular Scarlet and Violet map. I think that one's great too, but this just feels a little bit more lively and like the people are really hyped to live on this island, if that makes sense, the NPCs. There are also a ton of items to find on the ground around the island. Like, you know, you, cut, you look at the Pokeballs that are shining or glowing and you get like a revive or something like that. There are a lot of those around the island, which is pretty cool. The new clothing and the new accessories are also pretty neat. It's always cool to get some more customization for your character. Overall, I would say that this is a pretty good DLC. Of course, I can't speak for the second part. That comes out in a few months, but so far, I'm enjoying it, and I'm looking forward to playing the second part. And having it as a two-part DLC that comes out in separate months is great, in my opinion, because we can play it now and then come back in a few months. So it's like, so it just kind of revitalizes the game, like I said earlier. I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts are about this DLC. Let me know down in the comments. Let me know what your favorite part about it is, maybe what you don't like about it. I think it would be kind of interesting too. And yeah, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.